Welcome back for another episode of Transform Your Workplace. I've got Nicole Blevins with me. It's good to have you back, Nicole. Yeah, glad to be back. I always love our discussions. We always talk about really important stuff, at least I think so. And I think in you know in this environment that we're in, I think modern workforces need a really special type of leader. Leaders really need to continue to develop certain skills, work on themselves. So I wanted to just outline some of those things that leaders should be really focused on. And I wanted to start with you. Like, what do you think today's modern leader needs to focus on? Yeah, I mean, I think this is a really good topic because, you know, historically, like if you were just really good at your job, like it's like, oh, that's the only qualifying thing that, you know, you need to be a leader. And I think we've kind of discovered over time that 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 doesn't necessarily make you an effective leader or isn't necessarily what your employees need. So it's more than just really being good at the work or understanding the work. There's a lot of other skills that are needed to be a better leader. And so I think communication is a really big one. Leaders are having to communicate with their employees more regularly, especially in this kind of remote world that we're working in. Employees are needing regular and constant communication and to be up to date on where the organization is and where it's going. So being able to communicate effectively, I think, is a really important skill that a leader needs. And it's something that just kind of comes to mind based on what you were just saying. Yeah, and I think it's a great one because I've I've seen a lot of leaders, uh, never as any, of course, but many leaders are not great communicators, and they that's just a skill that they're lacking. And there's so many forms of communication nowadays, right? Like especially with these fragmented workforces and remote work, it's like, okay, now you could you know, do mass email, you can do a video if you want to, you could do like we have all team meetings, you could you communicate that way too. And so I think honing those skills across those channels can be kind of hard because sometimes it's written, sometimes it's you're on, you know, you're on video or sometimes it's live. And the way in which we communicate, the words that we use are really important. You know, we want to use simple and concise language. We want to reinforce, reinforce. I think too many leaders fall in the trap of you said it once, they should, everybody should know, but everybody's thinking, you know, they're bringing whatever they have with them at any given moment. So they may be tuning you out completely. So constant reinforcement. I think that's what you're alluding to, right? Yeah. Repetition is important. That and also not shying away from like tough conversations too. Like, you know, communicating effectively and about all of the right things and not shying away from communication that might be difficult or hard, you know, really leaning into that and being, um, getting more comfortable with having those conversations so that you and your employees are all on the same page. All right, I'm going to jump in with one of mine. And I think this is so underrated that it needs to be said early on is leaders need to take care of themselves. Leaders need to practice well-being and people are watching, by the way. So this falls into lead by example in a lot of respects too. But leaders often are taking care of everybody else first. But if they can't take care of themselves, they will not have the energy, the stamina, the mindset to be able to be there for their people. They're going to fall apart early on. They might be short fused. Um, So taking care of yourself looks different for everybody. But a couple of things come to mind for me is making sure you're taking regular breaks, go on walks, go outside, like go out in nature if you can. Meditation. I know that was woo woo in the past, but I think a lot of people are really adapting to it. I like to read. Reading yes, like new ideas reading. clears Same. your mind a little bit. It's it's relaxing in, in a lot of respects, unless you're like reading some fiction that's like a little crazy. But I, I think practicing well-being also means nutrition, sleep, and doing those things. People will notice. You'll have energy. You'll be there for your people, and you'll be more of an effective leader. I don't know if you've got anything to add to that, but yeah, that was very well said, and and I agree. And you know, I would say even personally, like in the spirit of vulnerability here, I have struggled with that in the past. Is like making sure I protect my time and build in time for breaks and lunches and doing all of that. So you do have to be intentional about things because you can be sitting in front of your computer going through emails, and before you know it, it's five o'clock, and you're like, I have not moved in eight plus hours. That's crazy. So you do have to be intentional about it. And that really kind of leads me to the next idea that I have or that I think is really important for leaders is leading by example as well. And that relates to kind of what you just talked about self-care is I had that realization, you know, earlier on when I was struggling with putting those breaks and lunches is I'm not leading by example for like my employees and my team. How can I tell them like, hey, 
protect your time, like make sure you're taking your breaks and lunches and you're not sending emails at like nine o'clock at night if I'm not doing that myself, right? So I have been really intentional and I know I know it's hard as a leader, like I know it's hard to do that. So you do just have to be really intentional and you know, save your time, protect that time and making sure that you're leading by example. And, you know, it's not do as I say, not as I do, or whatever that saying is. <laughs> um, <laughs> you want to lead by example so that people are seeing that and they're following that as well. That is so underrated in a lot of respects because people are always watching. And this is how you build a culture in a lot of ways too, is like your leaders, if they're, you know, they're up till 10 o'clock emailing and, and people see that, then employees are going to probably model that same behavior and that will... Or feel like they have to. Kind of spiral out of control. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, they see that and feel like they have to and maybe they don't want to, right? They're like, oh, geez, if this, if this is the kind of position where I need to do that, is that really what I want, you know, for myself long term? So just, you know, realizing that those, those little things we do that we may not realize have an impact and people are seeing that and making decisions or perception based off of that. So my next point for leaders would be adaptability. I believe that the workforce and quite frankly, just the business world and is changing dramatically. And it's a, there's a couple of forces at play. It's people, you know, the needs of people are changing. Economic, there's a lot of externalities that happen that, uh, you know, inflation, for example, and, uh, and other things that happen in the world that, that impact either the workforce or the people within it. And then technology, you know, got AI and automation and robotics and machinery, like just so much advancement that if leaders are not adapting to the changing times and making effectively like helping people through the change management process, just making sure like we're all along, uh, you're either on the bus or you're off the bus and, and just making effective decisions uh, to adapt to the changing times. I think that's a skill set that's like, it's hard to learn if you don't have the experience, like, but if you have the experience and you get comfortable with it, it's a lot easier to, to continue to adapt to the change and help your people along with it. But I don't know if you have any uh, perspective on this topic as well. Yeah, no, I agree. Adaptability is really important. And, you know, I think there's so many examples of like businesses that failed because they didn't adapt to the changing times like blockbuster right is that classic example of like didn't adjust yeah. to the way things were going or the trends or the changes wasn't adaptable to that and then you know a failed as a business as a result of that so i think that applies to leadership right because all businesses are run by leaders so making those decisions for your business but also to your employees and your employees needs like you have to be adaptable to that and to how the work is going to get done to be successful as a leader and as a business. What else you got? All right. I, I would say another one is really empowering your team is a big one. No one likes a micromanager, right? Like that is kind of a number one complaint that we hear is no one likes a micromanager. And so the way that you get away from that is by really empowering your team to do the work and find ways to do the work that might be even better than the way you would prefer it be done or that you initially thought it could be done. So by really like trusting your employees and building that relationship with them, you're able to empower them to like be really a part of the organization and the culture and see directly how their work connects to the bigger picture and allowing them really that flexibility to do the work and do it well and do it right. I think an easy way to empower a team or individuals is through initiatives We've had moments where we're like maybe implementing a new software or we have a strategic initiative that we're doing as a company and you assign like a group to it. And those people made up in that group may not be all leaders. Maybe they're just individual contributors. But I think that's a really powerful way to allow people to make decisions that are not necessarily in a position of leadership, but to get that experience to make decisions and to bring a, a group together. It reminds me of a group project in a lot of ways. And there's a lot to be learned from those moments. Yeah, 
No, I agree. And I love that on the Zenium team specifically, we have different committees. And when we are rolling out new products or new ideas, like we get a committee of people that will be impacted or involved in some way to like talk about it to really make it as successful as possible and getting diverse ideas and experiences. And it also helps people get on board with changes too, right? If you're part of the change, if you're part of the discussion or the decision making, you're more likely to carry that out and feel like empowered to be part of that change and be part of the success. So yeah, I love that we do that internally. And I think that's a great way that organizations and leaders can empower their teams for sure. So my next one, and I want you to, to add to this because I think, and we'll probably end the show with this one, but um, one of our colleagues models this one perfectly. And I think we can use some examples about how she does this. Uh, so build strong relationships. I think that's such a skill set that leaders need. They can't just sit in the ivory tower and make decisions all day and, and just be completely closed off from, from the team. Lacey Partipillo is who I'm talking about. And I knew yeah, you're, I knew you're, it. you're, you're, yeah, I knew it. <laughs> she is just amazing at connecting with people. And yeah. she, even if she has to have tough decisions, she's still great at building a, a two way relationship with people. And she remembers birthdays and anniversaries, and she's always checking in with people. Her one on ones, I'm sure she's asking great questions of her employees and um, even connecting with people who are not her employees. What do you want to say about that? Yeah, no, I agree. Like building relationships with your employees is really important. And, you know, I have had the pleasure of reporting to Lacey at a certain point at my career at Zenium, as well as like working with her as a colleague. I would even say that Lacey built a relationship with me before I even came to Zenium because, you know, hearing her on the podcast and like I connected with her on LinkedIn leading up to even starting at Zenium. <laughs> so really that is, that is an example that rings in my mind, really going all the way back to the beginning of me even starting with Zenium before I even started, she was reaching out to me on LinkedIn asking me if I needed recommendations on like local food places in Oregon or apartment complexes, like all of these things that I wasn't even thinking of as I'm getting ready to make this big transition and move to Oregon and, and join the Zenium team. And so like talk about building strong relationships is I had a great foundation before I even joined the Zenium team because she was intentional with like reaching out, asking specific questions, seeing how she could be of support. And that is really, I would argue, one of the most important things out of everything we've talked about today to do as a leader with your team. Because when employees genuinely feel like they have a relationship with you that you care about them and their success and want them to succeed, that really totally transforms the dynamic of the relationship, how they're working, how they're interacting with you and others on the team. So yeah, I would argue it's the most important and Lacey is absolutely the person that does it so well. And I really follow that lead too, because that is how she was with me or interacted with me that I take that on to my team and my employees as well as making sure that I'm being intentional and leaving time to have those conversations and ask questions, check in on how they're doing personally and how I can support them because it really makes all the difference. I believe that leadership, especially with like, as it relates to relationships and trust is so much built on the margins. It's like the little check-ins, it's the, the listening intently. It's the remembering birthdays and anniversaries. It's the having a tough conversation, even if it's, it's uncomfortable, but you can move forward together. It's all those little things, the day-to-day -day activities that add up and they build strong relationships. That's what an effective leader does. That's what Lacey does. I look up to people like that. That's the kind of leader I want to be. And I'm encouraging people listening to try their hardest to care about the little things. The little things do matter. Yeah. Agreed. Absolutely. And building those relationships really makes having those tough conversations that we do have to have as leaders sometimes a lot easier because when you have a strong foundation and relationship with that person, they know that the feedback or the situation that went wrong or whatever is happening is not a personal attack on them or isn't reflective of who they are because they feel like you know who they are, right? And you know their intention. And so it's a lot easier to have those conversations and for it not to be taken in the wrong way. So yeah, the little things matter and building on that creates that strong foundation for leadership moving forward. I wanted to do this, this episode and just run through this because I, I strongly believe that leadership capabilities are not read in a textbook necessarily. It's, 
it's all the little things. It's a lot of different things like communication and leading by example and building relationships one, one little moment at a time. It's all these little things that end up adding up to your version of what a leader is. And I think so many people have been, you know, whether they, they reported to a micromanager, a poor leader or a great leader, and that's what they had to model. Not everybody had the same modeling or was even taught the same. So we're on a soapbox here. We're, we're saying what <laughs> we think uh, effective leaders uh, look like in this modern uh, future. But I'm, I'm curious to hear from other people, like somebody listening, like what other leadership skills yeah. do you believe that the modern workforce needs? Yeah. So we want to hear from you. Reach out to Nicole on LinkedIn and, and me as well. Anything else to add, Nicole? Yeah, no, let's definitely continue this conversation and add to this list. So definitely reach out to us so we can keep the conversation going and just really support each other as leaders and support other aspiring leaders on how they can really be set up for success. Cole Blevins, it's been a pleasure to have you on Transform Your Workplace. You're always welcome. We have you on at least once a month and I, I really enjoy having you. So thanks for coming on. I love it. It's the highlight of my month. So thank you. <laughs> I love that. All right. Have a great day. All right. You too. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in for today's episode of Transform Your Workplace. The content on this show is strictly for general information and educational purposes only so that you can go transform your workplace in a positive way. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed on the show are the guest's own and don't represent the views, thoughts, and opinions of either Zenium HR, the sponsor of the show, or me, the host, Brandon Laws. Additionally, Zenium HR or myself, Brandon Laws, doesn't endorse any guest, their business, or any organization they represent, so discretion is advised. We encourage you to work with a trusted advisor to find a custom approach that fits your organization's needs. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode.